Next out, uh, using machine learning to automate seismic facies classification, same topic. Julie Bonn from Emerson. She's working in the exploration and production software department, head of strategy and marketing, geology by background. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Fernil. Again. Ah, that's fine. I should it's your PowerPoint, so that's fine. To the right. Yep. All right. So, uh, as Berlin mentioned, I work for uh, Emerson, the uh, um, Emerson Exploration and Production Software. So, for those who don't know, uh, I will present uh, the the I will present um, the work that has been done with the product, which is uh, part of the paradigm suite and. Uh, that comes because Emerson has acquired Paradigm very recently, so just in case you're confused, I'm just mentioning that. Tiny, tiny disclaimer before I start. I haven't done that work. My colleague, uh, Har, but they are based in Houston, so they couldn't fly to Stavanger, so therefore they appointed me volunteer to give that presentation. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. I might be not the best position to reply, but I'll, if I need to, I'll redirect all these questions to, to the, the right people. All right, let's start. So, as we've seen in uh, <clears throat> in the previous presentations, many learning machine learning methods are used to solve and and optimize various nonlinear problems, and we'll see how recent developments in machine learning can support oil and gas uh, challenges and also improve uh, our drilling strategy uh, optimization. Just a brief description of the agenda here. I'll start with um, introducing the, the case we've been working on, mention all the, the, the context and the different challenges, and then a few words on the motivation, the approach, some theory behind, uh, behind the work that has been done, and let conclu uh, just conclude with the, some of the benefits of rock typing classification workflow, and the output and the result uh, to conclude this, uh, this presentation. So just to introduce, um, what we can say is that um, it's important to state that in exploration and production, one of the major sources of uncertainty is the rock type distribution. And that makes it a real challenge uh, in our daily work. So finding the 3D distribution of the facies in, in, a, in, a, in a field is actually something that uh, has been challenging for years. You find many, many methods, many, many different approaches. And that's because the rock property distribution basically controls the flow behavior. So if you get it right, if you get it right, then it's fine. If you get it wrong, then it's a bit more annoying. So it's really uh, having a probabilistic approach towards this challenge is also very important. So how can we link to uh, machine learning? So we just very generic statement, but machine learning, we've seen that it capitalizes on continuously increasing amount of data. And we know that in oil and gas, the amount of data is actually continuously increasing, which makes it perfect candidate for applying machine learning technique. Then we know that machine learning is able to explore, analyze, and learn from data set in a way that the human eye might not be able to do so. And final point, but uh, really important in, in our uh, domain is the speed. Fa fast paced environments requires ways of making correct decisions fast, which actually makes uh, a real uh, good approach. So, a few words on, on this case. We're in Texas, uh, East Soldier Mount, so we're not entirely located into the into the Permian Basin, but we are on the eastern shelf of the Permian ba Basin, where uh, east of Lubbock, this uh, little star here, uh, rocks are mainly silicic elastic shelf, uh, carbonates, it's a small field, three to four million barrel uh, have been estimated, um, a lot of shallow vertical wells, so you see here on the geologic map, if I can get that, yeah, we're somewhere here. Few more details. Uh, uh, the the rock from this field are packstone, which were formed during Permian. So basically, emerged area organisms were active, building reefs. So then the porosity was uh, gained through bioturbation and fracturing at a later stage. 
Uh, we have three productive areas, uh, all from the wolf camp uh, formation, upper wolf camp, middle wolf camp, and lower wolf camp. Different sort of rocks, but basically that's the, the main production source. Um, the rock which is producing is composed of packed stone. Those layers are very thin, very difficult to identify, discontinuous, uh, quite difficult to, to represent, to portray in 3D. And for all of those who have absolutely no idea what I'm, talk I'm talking about, uh, basically Permian, um, Texas, looked a bit like Bahamas. So the available data that we've been using, well, basically the available, available data we had, a small seismic survey of high resolution and, and pretty good quality, some seismic attributes, so um, post-stack uh, information, and three wells. And the objectives here, uh, two major objectives. One is the prediction of the rock type, fluid content distribution throughout the reservoir to be able to predict, uh, to capture heterogeneities and also uh, predict the reservoir behavior away from the wells. And then of course, the validation of the next drilling strategy. So just a few words on that. Um, three wells were drilled and there is a plan for drilling a new well. A target was identified and there was a need for actually making sure that the target, uh, the predicted target would uh, hit the, the, the interesting facies, so those thin packed stone layers. The facies determination in the reservoir is important because it affects the reservoir property distribution and an inappropriate determination of the facies distribution may give unrealistic reservoir behavior. So that's two of the challenges. As I mentioned before, the layers are very thin, quite difficult to, to represent and the scale between, so our input data is seismic and wells and the scale and the resolution between those two uh, type of data is extremely different. And traditional inversion did not provide results of sufficient quality to support drilling decision. Therefore, a new approach was required. So just a couple of words on, on seismic facies classification. What we have is that the, uh, all the input data, the hard data, they are encountered at the well bore, and we need to extend that all over the reservoir. Um, but several challenges here. We have sparse data, the information between seismic and wells data is not linearly correlated. Integrating data of different resolutions manually is often tedious, impractical, and conventional inversion. Uh, sometimes when you do the fascist classification through traditional inversion, you may have results where you have classes that actually overlap because facies are not completely discontinuous. There is no clear limit between the different, the different lithologies. So therefore the classification can actually uh, overlap, um, having quite a high rate of confusion. How can we confidently determine facies distribution away from the wells? Good question. So our rock type classification approach is um, based on, on neural network. And uh, it's an approach that have been introduced in 2017. Uh, it's now a um, commercial package. Democratic Neural Network Association has proven to be efficient for predicting lithology from use of seismic data at the well location. Uh, you can use uh, pre-stack or post-stack data. Pre-stack are generally preferred because they tend to carry more information and uh, that can be combined with well data. So this approach is actually composed of um, several independent networks in parallel because it will allow a better separation of the different facies classes. And uh, you can combine this, uh, the information. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about how it works um, in the next slide. So the neural networks are well suited uh, when you need a nonlinear classifier uh, for feature extraction and transformation. And also it's a supervised approach which uh, actually enables to take into account the information we have from the well data and then expand the, this knowledge, uh, this, uh, knowledge away, away from, from the walls, from the wells. So all these networks that are working independently, they will uh, learn from the data. So there is, uh, this is the workflow overview. So the steps, basically we start by defining the training set then uh, um, define the input data, 
training the training uh, step and classification in order to expand to the this from this um, from the information collected and then the set the data set which is trained it's possible to classify and then uh, distribute all these results throughout the field and at the end of the workflow there is a step of smoothing which is optional the final output given by that method is um, volumes or maps of most probable fascist distribution, maximum probability, and probability for each fascist. A few, um, sorry for the slides, it's full of text, but that's taken from some papers and references that I, uh, I will show at the end of the talk. So for those who are interested, this is uh, the theory behind this approach. So why use the associative neural networks? Because when you use, basically when you use only one neural network, there will be a bias which is, um, which is um, that there, there is bias in the result of the training. So the use of several networks running simultaneously in association is actually a preferred approach. It uh, enables actually to handle training of associated neural networks with a unique set of seismic data paired with the well information and it compensates for this bias which will appear when you, if you use only one network. Then there is the notion of democratic learning. So when you use different, uh, different networks at the same time, you need to make a decision at the end, which result do we use? So this multi-strategy will be limited by the number of hard data samples from the training data set. So as we've seen in previous presentation, the data we have are very often uh, quite scarce and, and uh, the not a high density of input data plus the quality might be a challenge as well. So in, in order to, to get results that are more reliable, we've applied, we're applying a concept of democratic learning. So basically each network is going to learn and train the data set in its own way using its own method and at the end of this training stage there is a democratic vote which is applied between all these networks and um, the, if the unlabeled data, which is fetched by the, by the neuron set, if that unlabeled data is the same uh, for, from all the networks, then that, that data will be added to the enriched data set. So here is the input data, it's just more details about the workflow steps. The input data can be well observation, fascist logs, or fascist describing other features as well. And the seismic attributes are linked to fascist data during the training step. To, cre to create the training data set, well data can be upscaled uh, so that they are at the same scale as the seismic resolution. So that's uh, what I just explained. Each uh, neuron set will use its own uh, learning methods to analyze the unlabeled data. And what we have, so from the seismic data, there is then the idea of if all the fascists, if all the classification which is applied result in the same in the same class, you'll have that data, that seismic data will be added to the training set, enriching the training set to make the training stage actually of better quality. So this uh, contribution has to be unanimous for now. And if it's not the case, then the data is not added to the training set. In that, uh, and, and using that, the training data set contains both hard and soft data. And the final stage is the classification. So you have several tools that are provided to uh, QC uh, the result of this, uh, the result of this uh, prediction. And then the, the, all the data are actually propagated uh, throughout the, the reservoir. So if we go back to the real case now, we have used as input data stack and offset gathers, and the fascist logs have been defined by wireline logs. So if you see here, we have those layers that we're trying to expand throughout the field, find the distribution, probabilistic distribution, in order to take into account the uncertainty, very thin layers. And the final output was, um, so you can see here in this green volume is actually the, the 3D volume of those patches. And what we can check as well is that the match between the observation at the wells and the dis predictive distribution was actually rather good. Some key points to conclude here. 
We have seen that this approach can actually bring new potential about seismic data reliability for prediction of reservoir phases away from the wells. It will also provide faster images of the subsurface, still maintaining accuracy. And we can also apply this approach to other geological settings. And more importantly, in that particular case, what we've seen is that if you see here the, red, the, the pink dot here, that was the first target identified for drilling the new well. And that's actually the updated uh, prospect after the analysis. The well is currently drilling, so we don't know if the results were accurate or not, but we will know soon. Some reference for those who want to go deeper into the details. Thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>